The League of Women Voters, Flint Area, would like to thank Communities First Incorporated for their assistance with recording Flint Area candidates for office. And we also want to thank Flint Beat for assisting with these forums. We want to thank you as well for tuning in to the Flint School Board Forum. Unlike the legislative forums, each candidate was interviewed separately and no time limit was imposed. Like the legislative forums, however, candidates were uh, instructed to speak only about their own qualifications and not about uh, other candidates or political parties. Fifteen candidates filed for a seat on the board. All were invited to do an interview. Thirteen responded. Twelve completed an interview and one was unable to due to a family a medical situation. Five seats and therefore five votes are available. You may wish to take some notes as you decide which five you will select. This meeting is being recorded. Good afternoon, Mr. Del Mar Marone. Um, Good afternoon. We have six, we have six questions. Um, okay. And the first one is, what has prepared you for these responsibilities? Well, over the years, I've attended uh, um, Flint Community School School Board meetings, uh, going back to when they're held at the Sarvis Center. And then, um, you know, they would sometimes have remote meetings at Flint Central, Flint Northwestern. So it's been many years that, that I've attended the meetings. And, uh, uh, you know, I wasn't attending during COVID or, you know, maybe, I don't know, a few years before that. But um, so that would be one thing. Uh, I've volunteered for uh, Special Olympics at their state summer and, and uh, winter games. Uh, summer games are held on the campus at Central Michigan University and the winter games are in Northern Michigan. Um, I've uh, volunteered in the classrooms not in the Flint district, but I knew someone that was uh, in one of the out county districts. And uh, so I volunteered there uh, helping uh, elementary students with their reading and multiplication tables. Um, so, um, you know, I, I, I think those uh, just, you know, background knowledge of, uh, you know, some historical stuff that went on. In 2008, I was appointed to the uh, school board's uh, facility, the school district's uh, facility planning committee. Uh, there was probably about 12, 15 of us on the committee. We went to the schools to look at the conditions of them, to look at population, uh, where the students are living. Um, and, you know, some schools had to be uh, closed back then. Uh, we're kind of in the same situation now, doing the same thing, uh, asking, uh, you know, the superintendent and that for cost as to what it would take to tear down uh, buildings or rehab them or build new, uh, just, you know, whatever needs to be done so we have the information to make an informed decision. Uh, I was appointed to the school board uh, last year at the end of uh, September, 1st of October. Uh, so, you know, I've been through some training, um, don't know everything yet, haven't been presented everything, but, uh, you know, uh, just working, working that way. Okay. Um, do you have some ideas on how to maintain or increase student enrollment? Well, you know, that's a, that's a, a, a difficult thing. I think we can do it with uh, building some new buildings. Uh, one of the first things I said after my appointment, even during the interview, was that if you build it, not only will they come, but they'll stay and return. Now, it takes more than just a building. You need to have the, the let me say, the fundamentals inside the building. Uh, teachers, administrators, curriculum. But, uh, you know, some of, some of the buildings over the years have been in poor condition, We've heard in the media about, you know, cold classrooms, hot classrooms, and, and children, it, it makes it hard for the children to learn in that type of environment. Parents don't like it. Our, our parking lots are in disarray. And this stuff has not just happened since I've been appointed to the board, but this is years in the making. I mean, Central has been closed for years now, over a decade. 
Um, you know, Washington school has burnt down. Uh, we just received an estimate uh, 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 last week, I believe it was, uh, $3 million to tear Central Whittier down. Uh, hundreds of thousands to clean up the site over at Washington. Uh, just received that, I think it was last night or early this morning. Um, so I think it starts with the building, the curriculum, teachers, administrators. And I'm not saying there's a problem with the teachers or administrators. I'm just saying that's what it takes. But in Flint's case, our, our schools need to be, need to be helped. Uh, and I believe, in my opinion, it's a problem larger than what Flint, the district, can take on just because of the number of buildings that need to be taken down and or sold. We just got some bids uh, this week uh, as to um, purchasing properties. So as a board, we need to go through that and we will. Uh, we'll go through that uh, list of buildings that are available to be sold, which we, we receive bids on and see if they're competitive and uh, you know if the value is there to sell it. Okay, um, how is the role of the school board member different from that of a superintendent? Well, the school board members are the uh, employers of the superintendent. Uh, the school board only hires one person and that's the superintendent. Um, I'll say th the board gives maybe direction and the superintendent and his staff carries it out. So we're not there on the day-to-day -day operations of, of the building or what's going on in the classroom. It's up to the superintendent to make sure those things happen uh, that uh, the, the board, let me say, uh, request. So, you know, if we're, we're looking for a bid on a building the, the board or the board president cannot go out and put out a request for proposal, an RFP. It, it's the superintendent and his or her staff that needs to do that. So employer versus uh, employee. Uh, employer being the school board, the employee being the superintendent. Okay. Um, do you have any other responsibilities that could interfere with your attendance at meetings? No, uh, I've, I've attended, I believe, all the meetings. Uh, the, we have a, you know, they call it a COW, Committee of the Whole, and then the regular board meeting. Uh, the Committee of the Whole is on the second Wednesday of the month, and the third Wednesday of the month is the board meeting. So I believe I've been to all of the uh, board meetings, uh, I think I missed one committee of the whole meeting. So, um, yeah, no, I, I, I haven't had a problem. I don't foresee a problem, uh, you know. Okay, thank you. Um, have you, or will you be taking the school board training? Yes, I have been taking it. Uh, we had a training, uh, uh, let me say, session. Uh, it was last month, I believe, uh, for two or three days in Muskegon. Uh, we have another one coming up uh, here uh, shortly in Traverse City. Last year, there was one in Grand Rapids. So I took advantage of uh, all those, uh, let me say, sessions, meetings, training. OK. Um, so now we're down to the last question. No. What do you think are the most important issues that Flint schools are facing? Uh, I, I, I'm going to say declining enrollment. Um, the other would be the condition of our buildings. Uh, the, the district is short on teachers and staffing. Uh, pay is important. We just voted to uh, reopen the uh, pay uh, the uh, pay agreement of the contract uh, 
with the para, paraprofessionals. Um, so, uh, you know, and, and overall, just it's just the lack of money for what needs to be done. I, I mean, that, that's a, a costly expense for the district to tear down all those buildings. And then we have a, a, a you know, we're a, a, under a, a time limit, a time frame for the ESSER funds, which is similar money to the ARPA funds that uh, City Hall, Flint City Hall has received. Um, they're, they're different monies that, to be spent in different ways. I've tried to uh, collaborate with uh, Flint City Council and the administration. So as the uh, community outreach uh, chairperson, I was able to bring in the, the then uh, current uh, city council president uh, one week and then the uh, one month and then the following month I, I brought in the mayor to see if there's some type of collaboration that the city, that city hall and the school board can do, the school district to better use the ARPA funds, which the city has received and the ESSER funds which the district has received. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your interview today. Uh, we appreciate you being involved. And although there's only five spots open, we thank all of the candidates for uh, being being interested and engaged with the community and, and really uh, wanting to, to do a good thing. So thank you very much for joining us today.